there, welcome to this video. I recently made a video where I looked at the 10 nails in the coffin of rock. These are um, the, the 10... What's this? Who's talking to me? We'll try and start. Come on, start the video. You're, you're nearly three minutes in. Right, let's clean my glasses. Let's get myself sorted out. So, I recently made a video where I looked at, you've heard all this before, I looked at the 10 nails in the coffin of rock. These are the 10 things I think made rock go rubbish and basically killed rock. My, my um, uh, contentious point is that rock is now dead. Now, I'm not too sure whether rock is dead, but it's a nice line of discussion, isn't it? Because there's that feeling, we feel it's not the same as it was. Now, on that list, I didn't mention it, but in 11th place was the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Okay? And I thought, I'm gonna do a video just on the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Now, as I was thinking this, last week, the nominees for the 2024 Hall of Fame are released, right? And so this starts to get spread, you know, on um, all the social networks. Everyone's going to have you seen the nominees and you've got to vote. You've got to vote for which one you think should go on. Oh, that's what we're supposed to do, isn't it? Now, I want to tell you something about any awards show or anything like this. Right. If you watch the Ox, the Oscars or the Grammys or the MTV Awards, what's happened is they have got together and they've said, we're going to have the best guitarist or the best film. And we're going to give a very special award. It's very, very special. And we're going to give it to five people. And you're going to find out. So that element of finding out, that element of nosiness always works. It pulls you in. The five people that they're going to ask, they're all superstars, aren't they? They're all famous. And they're all going to turn up for free in their best outfits and sit there. And you're going to be able to get ratings because you're going to be able to then film them in a dramatic situation but not pay them. Because they're going to sit there and you know, they're going, oh, am I going to get it? Am I going to get it? And then when they do get it, they can feign that they were like really surprised. And if they don't get it, they can pretend like they're not really that bothered and clap the other person. And that little bit of drama over and over again is interesting to us idiots that take all this media stuff in. So that's why these things exist. That's what you've got to remember. So this list is all about, you know, piquing the interest of us and really we're thinking, wouldn't it be great to see that band on stage again? Right? That's what really, this is about. Okay? But the idea behind the, be, be, you know, behind the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame is the idea that somewhere there is this Hall of Fame. This sort of platonic Mount Olympus of specialness. And you can walk up to it and as you walk in, you will be ushered into some sort of strange space. I have an idea of what this is. Right, that you're walking down a corridor and you look to the left and there is this sort of um, sort of religious icon for the Beatles. And then you look around and there's one for James Brown. And then you look around and there's one for Little Richard. Then you look around and there's one for Led Zeppelin. And we walk down this hallowed hallway 
and every year they bring somebody in like an initiate into this special group of um, legendary beings that have gone beyond normal human um, down-to-earth Ness, they are now elevated into the Olympian gods along with Zeus and Apollo. That's what's going on here. And I believe that when you get inducted into the Hall of Fame, there is something that happens to you that is very, very special. Now, my friend Bev Bevan, who was the drum, drummer with ELO, he got inducted into the uh, um, Hall of Fame and he's, he's got a special thing that's on his mantelpiece that said he's been inducted into it. And I've seen it. He's in there. If you go down that hallowed hallway, right, you will turn around a corner and there in front of you will be the icon, the altar of ELO. Oh, ELO. You know, like Caligula, you know, making himself a god. Like Caligula turning around and turning his horse into a, 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 some important person in his realm. It's a little bit like that. So all these people are in there and they're a little bit like Caligula's horse, aren't they? Okay, so that in itself, I'm dubious about, right? But the central theme of this video is the fact that the, to do this to rock and roll, it, it's, it's like a contradiction. Rock and roll should never have got to a point where it was elevated to this godlike status. Rock and roll is the music of the outsider. It's the music of the dispossessed. It's the voice of youth. You know, Little Richard, I'm sure who has got the altar in there, was a gay, screaming, cross-dressing black man <laughs> singing Tutti Frutti. And I'm not going to go into what Tutti Frutti is about. You could look it up. Good golly, Miss Molly. You know, the whole thing is something else, as Eddie Cochran once said. This is what rock and roll is. You know, the, the probably the most um, profound thing that has ever come out of rock and roll is bird is a word. Now that tune, it's bonkers. I've always felt that that is pure rock music. It has everything in it, right? And that's what rock music is. It's not something you stick into a museum. Once you stick it into a museum, it's dead, right? That Rock and Roll Hall of Fame with its great big glass pyramid, so it looks like there should be some, you know, dead mummy, Egyptian mummy in there, right? With, it, with its, you know, all-seeing eye of the Illuminati on the side, you know, that hallowed place, right, is a tomb. It's a tomb for rock music. The irony of having in those big red letters, long live rock, <laughs> outside, which you can see in my thumbnail, I'll stick it in the video here, right? That is so not the case. That's, this is the tomb of rock, where rock went to die, okay? But it gets worse than this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through the nominees that they've come up with. And I'm gonna discuss now their worthiness to go into the uh, Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. So the first one we've got is Mary J. Blige. I like Mary J. Blige, a great, you know, R&B pop singer from the 90s, in recorded some great songs. Now, she's great. Um, should she go in the, the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? Well, <laughs> she ain't Stevie Wonder. She's not Led Zeppelin. She's not the Beatles. She's not the Rolling Stones. What level are we going to have um, so I just plug my camera on. What level are we going to have um, to get into this Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? But Mary J. Bly, there's nothing wrong with Mary J. I ain't got a problem with that. The next one on the list is Mariah Carey. Mar Mariah Carey, one of the great singers of the 1980s, sold a ton of records. Is she rock and roll? And this is the first thing that comes up with both of these. This was originally the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Uh, when Dolly Parton got inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, she felt a bit guilty because she's not a rock and roller. She then went on and made a rock and roll album and it was bloody brilliant. And she got there like 70 years old with the leather in the car. She's amazing. Dolly Parton's amazing. I love her. But whether she should be in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, I don't know. Right? 
Um, and the same is the next one they got in choice is, is Cher. Now Cher, <laughs> we're getting to the point. Now Cher's a celebrity. She's made some good films. She made a couple of classic songs. But most of it's pap. Did I say that? <laughs> it's pap. Cher, she's been there. It's like, yeah, she's been around for a while. She's done some stuff. But I don't think she's the same as the Beatles or Led Zeppelin or Rolling Stones or Frank Zappa. I don't think she's the same as these or Captain Beefheart. She's not in the... She's, she just, she's not important enough. Okay? Cher is a celebrity. And she's not a rock and roller. You know... If I could turn my time. You know, I mean, her most important um, contribution to the history of music is that awful use of autotune. That's it. The rest of it's pap. Right, next one on the list, the Dave Matthews Band. Dave Matthews, they've sold a few records. They've got a following, haven't they? But what is their following? Nerds. That's what their following is. Right, they're like a they're like a, a commercial, you know, REM. It's all very nice. The Musos like Dave Matthews, don't they? It's a nice plane on a tasty plane. His annoying voice grating on. Right, but for me, Dave, the Dave Dave Matthews is the example of one of those safe middle of the road bands that a certain nerd would like. Right, uh, it's it's. Everything's done right. It's in the same bracket for me as something like the Lighthouse family. Right? Yeah, they've sold some records, but there's no way that the Dave Matthews Band... And I was... When I Googled the Dave Matthews Band, I came up with a list of the most hated bands in history. Creed was at number one, and at number two was the Dave Matthews Band. Right? The next one they got on the list is Eric B and Rakim. Well, if you're going to bring rap and hip-hop in, and you have to, Eric B and Rakim were the first groundbreaking rappers to really elevate rap to an art form. Without a doubt, Eric B and Rakim should be on the list. They should be in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, if you're going to widen it to, to include rap, which I think you have to. The next one they've got on the list is Foreigner. I've been waiting for a girl like you. Now, <laughs> you take that song. Do you know that when they recorded that song, the lead singer, what's his name? Lou Gam or something, Lou, whatever his name is. You know, he couldn't find the right mindset for this middle of the road sort of yacht rock classic. He, he was in the studio going, I can't, I can't, I need a muse. I need a muse. So they went off and found a fit woman Fit girl, and they sat her in front of the singer, and he then sang the song to her. So when you listen to that song, you can hear the emotion of him singing, I've been waiting for a girl like you. You know, some, some horrible long-haired rocker to some young girl. That's what he's doing at the time. Now, for me, that story does not elicit me with, oh, is that wonderful, the production technique, and how they, he used that as a muse. It just sounds creepy and weird. And for that very reason, I don't want Foreigner in there. I never liked Foreigner in the, in the first place. Yes, they're not REO Speedwagon. Without, they're not that bad, without a doubt, right? But they, it's... It, <laughs> The Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. I know they've sold, told, sold a ton of records and all that sort of thing. Good singer. There's some good songwriting there. But I just don't feel like they should be put in. And I feel the same way with Peter Frampton that they're trying to get in now. Peter Frampton. Now, Peter Frampton, right, there's two things about Peter Frampton that he's got going for him. When he bought out Frampton Comes Alive, it was the biggest selling album in history until Thriller came along, right? Also, Rick Beato loves him. And Rick Beato has championed Peter Frampton so much that I think there's been a Peter Frampton resurgence and now we're all supposed to turn around and go, isn't he great? Right? <sighs> maybe, maybe Peter Frampton can come on. Maybe, you know, Rick Beato's, you know, championing of him has, has, has made us all reevaluate him. But it hasn't made me reevaluate him. But I don't mind to that. Right, the next one, Jane's Addiction. Right, they're going to go through the grunge bands, right? But you've got to remember, Soundgarden has not yet been nominated. It is not in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Uh, Jane's Addiction's okay. I haven't got 
problem with that. Cool and the gang. Yeah, they're a funky band from the 70s. They're not Earth, Wind and Fire. It, it seems that they've got to a point where they, they're having to drop down to a certain level now. There's nothing wrong with Cool and the gang. There's nothing wrong with um, Mary J. Bly, the Mariah Carey. Dave Matthews, I can't stick. Foreigner, I can't stick. Peter Frampton's all right. You know, but they, they, it's like they've dropped down to a certain level. They? They, they, they're, they're scraping the bottom of the barrel. And if you've got the Hall of Fame, if you've got the tomb of rock that you're putting people in, then do you really want to start scraping the barrel? I mean, how low are you eventually going to go? In 50 years' time, who are they going to be putting in then? Millie Vanilli? The Goombay Dance Band? Shawaddy Waddy? Who's going to be at that point? And if you're not, if you're not going to put Shawaddy Waddy in, what's the, really is the difference between Shawaddy Waddy and Cher? What's the difference? Lenny Kravitz. Now, I, I respect Lenny Kravitz. He's a very handsome man. He's nearly 60 years old. He's just come up with a new single. He doesn't look 60. He's a very handsome man. He's a cool guy. He's made some cool songs, hasn't he? You know, he's done Are You Gonna Go My Way? You know, how many adverts have you heard that on? Millions. You know, he's, what else has he done? I wish I could fly right up to the sky but I can, that's now that's awful that's, isn't it that's not Kravitz he's done so he's had some big hit records right but really he's just a pretty boy with a guitar isn't he that's what he is he's got some cool riffs every now and then right he obviously comes from some family he's one of these you could just tell with Kravitz he comes from a certain family background he's just in he's in it's like Sophie Ellis Bexter, he's just in. He'll never go away because his family connections will keep him in there. That's what I've always felt with Kravitz. I'm ranting here, I could be completely wrong. You know, Kravitz might be watching this going, I worked way, way, way up from the bottom. I had to learn the guitar and learn this to sing and I had to be really good looking and get me dreadlocks and my cool leather trousers on. Right, yeah, he's, he's very cool. The next one they, they've got nominated is his Oasis. Oasis, <laughs> God, I spent a number of years playing in an Oasis tribute band, which is ironic because when their drummer left back in 1995, I tried to audition for Oasis and I sent my cassette tape down of me playing lots of intense jazz fusion in 1916 and a photograph of me with my long hair looking all pouty and jazz fusion-y and surprise lo and behold I never got the audition. I could imagine that perhaps Noel and Liam looked at this photo and listened to this tape in disgust and astonishment but I did attempt it. Now say I'd have got that audition right. Say I'd gone and got my hair cut you know and put a v-neck top on you know and uh, and um, set me down playing over some track that was nicked off the Beatles maybe then I would have got the gig and now I would be in a position where I could be going to the Hall of Fame and being put in it I'm sure then I'd be championing it now I think Noel's come out and he's actually been quite critical good on you Noel right and Noel now is producing some very great songwriting. He's learnt his craft. He's a, he's a good guy. I don't mind Noel. And he always entertains me when he talks. Same with Liam, right? But I played those songs over and over again. And they're all ripped off from other songs. They're so derivative. And also the lyrics are puerile and don't make sense. Uh, people say that progressive rock is pretentious. No, Oasis is pretentious. They write lyrics that sound like they're deep, but they're not. Right, they're just twaddle, like John Anderson's. Twaddle. They're just there to sound good. It's not like the Beatles, right, whoever they're ripping off, or Pink Floyd, or that. That Coca-Cola song. You're getting a lot of singing on this one. So, and Oasis, yeah, you know what? why Oasis are important? Because in the 1990s, you had a dance music thing going on here in the UK. And the, the rock bands got knocked back a little by this, right? Oasis came out and they were able to take this sort of indie sort of... Um, 
thing that was going on, which were groups like Chapter House, Stone Roses, they pulled that together, but their great genius was to be able to grab in almost like that working class football audience that would have been listening and going out and just listening to dance music. It pulled them in, right? It sold it to rock to an audience that doesn't normally listen to rock. That was their great thing. And in doing that, they had to sort of, um, in, other, in, a, in a way, drop down what all these great bands had done and make it palatable, right? That is what Oasis did for me. You know, they did write some reasonable songs. They are, they are good songwriters. Um, Blur were a better band at that same time and Manson were the great band of that era for me. Game a good band, but again, it's it's like these are these bands aren't terrible. These artists aren't terrible, but should they be in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame? Right. The next one is Sinead O'Connor. Poor old Sinead O'Connor. She died last year. She's known for really having one record that was a big hit that was written by Prince. Right. Um, of course, they are doing this because she's died, and the Pogues must already be in there. So well, that's why Sinead O'Connor's in there. The next one's Ozzy Osbourne. Now you're going to think I'm going to say Ozzy Osbourne, that's, he should be there. Black Sabbath should be there without a doubt. When Ozzy leaves Black Sabbath, he makes um, um, Blizzard of Oz, which is a classic rock album with Randy Rhodes on guitar. Diary of a Madman, they're all great. And then he slowly descends into becoming some sort of comic celebrity household name character you know who is going to eventually end up you know voicing the character in Romeo and Juliet right that's where he's headed so if we look at Ozzy Osbourne's solo career there are some important stuff there whether it's important enough to put him in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame I don't know um, the last then we've got two more to go the next one's Sade beautiful lady she still looks amazing doesn't she smooth operator Right, the, the, the queen of handbag, handbag pop music. That's the sort of music in the 80s when you'd go down to the nightclub and there'd be a bunch of ladies there with their handbags in the middle dancing around it and they would be dancing to Sade. Right? Again, I feel that Sade comes from sort of special elite that we have no idea of, which is why, even though she's only had a couple of hits years and years ago, she's still, you know, uh, revered more than she should be. Right? That's what I think of Sade. <laughs> Shouldn't be on the list. The last one they've got is a tri Tribe Called Quest. If I was voting for one of these, it would be a Tribe Called Quest, because a Tribe Called Quest are perhaps the greatest hip hop rap group of all time. The most artistic, the most heaviest, and all the rappers I've ever worked with have always pointed them. They're like the Led Zeppelin, the Beatles of rap. So my vote goes to a Tribe Called Quest. But before we finish on this topic of how horrendous this all is, Let's just go through some of the acts that aren't in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. So they want to put Eric B and Rakim in, but they don't want to put Africa Bambata in. The guy that created, along with the Sugar Hill Gang and Grandmaster Flash, that created hip hop. The guy that went into those um, suburban black neighborhoods and stopped them fighting together by creating battles, rap battles. Right? Afran Gambart is a legendary character. Why the hell is he not on the list? Right? Now, they want to put Cher in and Mary J. Blige, but they don't want to put Bjork in. Bjork! She's one of the great geniuses of the last 30 years. Right? She's an avant-garde electronic music artist that's been able to hit the charts and, and become a household name. She's done something which only someone like a Kate Bush has ever done before. She should be there. Right, The next one, I cannot believe. Captain Beefheart is not in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. Right, Captain Beefheart, infinite punks, avant-garde rock, fusion, progressive rock, everything. Absolutely everything. But of course, Captain Beefheart's dead. The people, the people in the, in the mainstream, a normal lot of people don't really know who he is. And that's a big important thing here. They'd rather have a share in because if Cher gets nominated in and Cher turns up, there's going to be viewers. If you put Captain Beefheart in, you're going to have to have Zoot Horn Rollo or somebody turn up, some guy you've never heard of, you know, and then people are going to go, what's this? And then they're going to go back and what's the world? Well, I'll have a check this out. They're going to listen to track mass replica and be horrified. Iron Maiden, what is going on? 
Iron Maiden haven't been, like, like, Iron Maiden's one of the biggest rock bands of all time. They sold 200 million records. They created the new wave of British heavy metal, which begat all heavy metal from after that. They're iconic, you know. I wouldn't be if it wasn't for Iron Maiden. Why are they not in? I know nothing about this because um, I'm not enough of an Iron Maiden fan, but the Iron Maiden fans must be up in arms about this. They must be up in arms that they haven't been put in. Right, uh, Joy Division. You know, the doomy post-punk, you know, proto-goth, you know, band that then begat new, I've used begat a lot of times today, I've, I've gone all biblical on you. You know, the, the, the begat new order that was one of the first sort of dance groups to not pull from sort of a rhythm and blues R&B tradition, you know, and, you know, Blue Monday. This is all classic stuff. Why hasn't New Order been put in? Maybe they're not that well known in America. That could be what it is. And maybe the fact that their singer hung themselves does not go well. Right. King Crimson's not in. King Crimson. King Crimson's not, is, is not in the Hall of Fame. Right. They want to put in Sade, but King Crimson's not in there. Anyone watching this channel, do I really need to explain about King Crimson? They're not in there. It's bonkers. Arthur Lee's Love. Incredibly influential band that made masterpieces albums that influenced everybody. It's like a dealer, influenced heavy rock. Seven and Seven is, is, is one of the founding tracks of heavy rock, heavy metal. There'd be no Zeppelin, there'd be no Rush if there was no Seven and Seven is. Arthur Lee was a genius, but he's dead, isn't he? Right, but I can't stand why love's not in there. Motorhead! Motorhead! Americans, did you not realise what Motorhead represents? Just don't, they do not know. Of course, they're all dead, aren't they? All of them are dead. I, I might do a video on bands where they're all dead. Motorhead's one of those bands. I ain't talking about the newer Motorhead. I'm talking about... Let me kill Minster. I'm talking about Filthy Animal Taylor and Fast Eddie Clark. All three of them have got great nicknames. Motorhead is why I'm here. I just said Iron Maiden is why I'm here. I got interested in rock music in 1980. Rainbow brought a record out, what Snake brought to record out, Judas Priest came out with United. And around about that time, Motorhead came out with Ace of Spades. Now, I like Judas Priest, I like Rainbow. But when Ace of Spades came out, I took it home, I put the record on, and as it started up, I leapt out the chair and went berserk. I was 12 years old, and it went bypass my consciousness of what I like and what I don't like, and it went straight to the go berserk mode. A couple of years later, I went to see him, the first live band I ever saw. It was the loudest band I've ever saw to this date. They were incredible. Motorhead and Lemmy coming down in 1982 on the Iron Fist tour. The roof of the building coming down on chains with a great metal fist opening itself, lights in the fingers. Does anybody remember that tour? Motorhead. They haven't got Motorhead in there. They want to put Foreigner in, but not Motorhead. The next one, Soundgarden. <laughs> Chris Cornell, the greatest rock singer that ever lived. Right? And then they aren't in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. What is their definition of rock and roll? I'll tell you what my definition of rock and roll is Chris Cor Cornell coming out in 1990, 91, or whenever it was, with Jesus Christ pose, putting on MTV and seeing the most beautiful man, shirt off, hair is splendid, standing there like Jesus Christ and singing and hitting notes that you'd never heard before. Screams that went, just went up and up while this churning industrial mass of drums and heavy guitar that was beyond Black Sabbath but seemed to be rooted in that but also rooted in, you know, dark industrial music. Jesus Christ pose with that wild, you know, colour scheme and the psychedelia, you know, and the flashing crosses and Chris Cornell looking like a god. Good. I can't do it. There's no pike. Nobody can do it. Right? There's been loads of screamy heavy rock singers, but nobody's screamed with the um, uh, pathos and nihilist, um, depressive 
angst that Chris Cornell puts into his voice. Bloke was a genius. He should be in the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. The Smiths. The most important band of the 80s. The, the band that launched a million bands. But of course, Morrissey's a right-wing Nazi now, isn't he? So they don't want him turning up. They ain't going to vote him in. Because Morrissey will have to turn up and he'll get there, you know, he'll do all that, won't he? And put up and start scanting about how great England is and how it needs to be protected from all the horrible ethnic minorities. It was all right when he was talking about not eating meat. He was lovely there. They all loved him then. But now he's become a right-wing fascist. They don't like him. Right. XTC. XTC. Right. Maybe they shouldn't be in. I would put him in just because of their absolute genius. Their incredible songwriting. They represent that post book new wave genius that came out, which, which points back to psychedelia. You know, and, um, you know, they were Tony Williams' lifetime fans. They were Frank Zappa fans, you know. They, they were incredible, you know, XTC. And last but not least, Frank Zappa and the Mothers of Invention. Now, Frank Zappa might be in there. I don't know. But I know that the Mothers of Invention aren't in there. And they should be in there. The Mothers of Invention should be in there. And I ain't going to explain why. So what do we have as we get to the end of this video? What we have is some, you know, Mount Olympus tomb to rock music somewhere in America, right? Can you visit this place and, and see what's going on? I don't know. Is it like a museum? Can you go there? I just don't know. But there is this Hall of Fame and you can visit there. And in there are put the, in the icons of rock music and they've been putting them there every year. And the reason why they do is because they can have a big ceremony and they can make a ton of money out of it, right? Um, they have put in all the obvious choices. Are they now scraping the barrel? Or do they now need to say, no, no more, let's shut the book. Now, this is really, really interesting because I've used this in an example of rock being dead, you know. Rock is so dead now that they've created a big tomb to stick it in. Right? That's basically what the central idea of this video is. But what's interesting is, why can't they put any more in? Surely there must be great rock and roll bands for the last 30 years. Rage Against the Machine, they're probably in. Radio Hit, Head, there, all they'll be in. Then what? Since 2000, what's the most important rock band to emerge since 2000? Arctic Monkeys, White Stripes, The Strokes, Killers, Maroon 5. None of these are a Prince. None of these are a Metallica. None of these are a Nirvana. None of these or an Earth, Wind and Fire, or a Led Zeppelin, or a James Brown, or a Stevie Wonder, or a Cream, or a Beatles, or Rolling Stones, or The Who. Right, the big problem the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame has is that rock music is dead. And we are not going to produce any more bands to put in there. I know you lot are so upset that I've said that. You're so upset. All you're going to do is rather than say, I think rock music is alive, I buy lots of records. And haven't you listened to Bloomy Dumb's Fist or, you know, Gantries of Hell? And they'll let bunch, but I'm sure these bands are great, you know, with their little following on Bandcamp, but I've never heard of them. I'm talking about the Beatles. I'm talking about the Rolling Stones. Right? If you go back to big band jazz, you had Benny Goodman, you had Artie Shaw, you had the Dorsey Brothers, you had Duke Ellington, you had Count Basie. These bands were huge. Now, there's still big bands now. You can name them, but we'll never have heard of them. You know why? Because big band music died in the 1960s, the 1950s. By the 1960s, it was dead. It was gone. You can go and still see big band jazz. It'll sound exactly like it did 70 years ago. You can't push the envelope. It's dead. It's gone. 
And that's what we've now got with rock music. And there will not be any pioneering, exciting, culture-changing bands anymore. And those of us who grew up that were le looking for the next big thing, we are still looking for it and we think it's going to come out. But it's not going to come out. Right? Taylor Swift, huge though she may be in terms of popular music, and talented as she may be or may not be, but she is not the same as the Beatles or the Stones or Led Zeppelin. We all know that. What, why that is. And I'm trying to get into it because it's actually quite hard to describe why she's not. But we, we know she's not. And the trouble is, is because music we feel. Music's about emotions. We feel it. And we can feel the difference. And people who've grown up not in that rock era and don't understand, you know, how that works. They don't feel it. They hear something different. Right? And it might be a wonderful thing. And maybe there'll be a Hall of Fame to that. But I tell you, it's not rock. It's not rock and roll. If you like this video, stick a like on it. If you want to see some more stuff like this of a ranting old man, ranting about rock being dead and, and making us all feel depressed, but yet feel comforted at the same time in having our sort of prejudices, our old age prejudices uh, confirmed, then, uh, you know, subscribe to the channel if you want to um support me you can become a patreon uh there's tons of content there and you can join the patreon meet every couple of weeks where we all get together and have a right laugh and it's right fun it really is and i love chatting to my patrons now we've got one on friday this week so if you want to come and join that you're more than welcome to and if you don't want to do that you can drop a donation into my youtube paypal tip jar the links down below i hope you enjoy this video i apologize that it was a bit ranty some people like me ranting um and some people don't and when i rant I try and do it in a humorous way. So please be aware that some of the stuff I said was probably just to make a few people chuckle. And those with no sense of humor that get upset by things like that, this is not the channel for you. And so for those people, I just want to say one thing.